Hey everyone! So, this is my very first vlog, and I'll vlog, and I was thinking of a, great, of a great way to connect with you guys other than the stream. At Black Gods ESP uh, had an idea on Twitter of explaining the reasoning behind my favorite games. Uh, every single one of my fave games has a story behind them, so it was quite easy to pick this suggestion up, and I think, and I thank Black Gods for this. Uh, I think probably the most iconic game for me was Baldur's Gate, which I think is the first first game up on there. Um, there's three, I think there's three games in the Baldur's Gate series. Um, there's Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate Shadows Arm, and Baldur's Gate something something Belial, or Belial, however you want to say it. Yeah, so Baldur's Gate was uh, one of the first games that I played that I really got into. Like, I spent hours and hours uh, playing it. Um, <clears throat> it was made by Bioware. This was way before Mass Effect. And it had, it was one of the first games that had uh, the actions you take actually affected the whole of the game. It was, you know, it was one of those first games it, it affected the, the whole thing. And it was based on the uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons format, which is why I was so excited about it, because my parents at the time, they played Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, but because I was only, what, I, uh, 12, I think, when this game came out, I couldn't play Advanced Dungeons, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. It was way too hard. It's a lot harder than than Fifth Edition now. I'm not saying I couldn't play it now, but Fifth Edition is a lot easier. Uh, but they made it like that. But anyway, back to Baldur's Gate. So Baldur's Gate appealed to me because it was a really well done, not highly graphically intensive game. I mean, you couldn't really get highly graphically intensive. I think the most graphically intensive game at the time was like unreal I think uh, even if it came out then maybe Doom 2 uh, I don't know anyway but what really appealed to me was the hand painted backgrounds I love the hand painted backgrounds on that game uh, and the uh, everything really was just hand done um, and animated and stuff and it was great and the, the you could, what Baldur's Gate was was a, a party RPG so you'd have a I think it's five people you could have, it was a long time ago, but yeah, you could have a party of five people that have, you know, you have a wizard or a sorcerer, or like a warrior kind of class, uh, there's like a, a buttload, they're all based on Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, and you can multi-class as well, uh, so you could make a warrior wizard, right, or, or a, I don't know, a, a rogue cleric, those kind of things, you know, that's pretty cool. The reason why I love that game, as I keep saying, is because it was it felt so free as well. And you'll see that with a the theme of a lot of my games is that they're quite free. You can go across the across the map, and after a certain you know tutorial level, you can do whatever you like. There's always a big story element with me. I love story. It really pushes me to play the game. I hate filler stuff. So you don't you won't you don't tend to see me play games that are just level based, even though I play Binding of Isaac quite a lot, <laughs> but I, th I, th I think that's a bit different, But because there is progress in that, but you won't see me play just games for the hell of it uh, because of the story, um, because there is no story, sorry. League of Legends, though, I don't know why League of Legends appeals to me so much, I mean that game doesn't, it has its lore is like completely trash, but anyway, Baldur's Gate came in 8 discs back then, 8 CD-ROMs. And unfortunately, I couldn't complete the game because one of those, when because we moved a lot, uh, as uh, when I was a little kid, so one of those discs got lost. This game wasn't mine; it was my mother's uh, ex-husband's. So I just I when I used to play it, I, it was a limited time, so I used to get as much out of it as I could. The game was great; it was my very first foray into like fantasy world, uh, where you could just be defeating gnolls, you've ever heard of gnolls, if you've ever heard of gnolls and trolls and you could save like a petrified cleric uh, from being ambushed by uh, basilisks and then later on she would join your party and then there's like this legendary guy, some of you may know him in the Dungeons and Dragons Forgotten Realms kind of scene called Dritz Durden. You meet him and you can actually kill him and take his weapons, which I did once and then never did again because I felt horrible. It's really hard. The game's super hard. 
right so I never completed the game until about five years ago I mean I didn't really get much time to complete it uh, because of it being my mum's ex-husband's but eventually five years ago when you know I'm a grown man so I bought my own uh, he says in an owl costume but I'm a grown man so I bought my, my I have my own PC and I bought my own copy of it and I actually went through the whole game you got to think as well that back then you didn't have no Google no Google to actually help you uh, with the tips and strategy of that game because there was quite a bit of tactics that you had to use on certain stuff uh, so you have to just kind of wing it which was amazing and then five years ago I did the same I never looked at anything on Google or anything which I normally do because I just felt like hey I just want to do this vanilla I want to do it like a you know when I was a kid and when I completed it was amazing it was, I, lo I loved it oh yeah and I was like a, <laughs> I remember from my first because I played through that game quite a lot I used to get to a certain point with a roll and then be like okay well uh, this is kind of boring so I'm good you know not my kind of play style so I'm gonna play something else so I used to do it a lot yeah there's actually I completely uh, by accident uh, figured out a cheat back then on that game which was like something to do with the gems like I think you could put a gem because you get like these like just random stones and gems just hanging lying around who gets a gem and then you stick it in a quick slot and then you come out of your inventory and then you go back into your inventory you put a potion in in its place right and then you come out your uh, come out your inventory again and you just keep clicking on the potion and I completely uh, I did this by accident because there was like a glitch where I couldn't see the potion popping up on the quick slot so I just kept on pressing it and then I went back into my inventory and I had like it, it it changed all my it changed the stones the stone so I had like 15,000 of them so I sold them to the vendor and it gave me like 100,000 gold or something which you know pretty much set me up right but that was a cheat so <laughs> I mean I went with it for a while but I felt terrible for doing it so I didn't bother how's Baldur's Gate I could speak for hours about Baldur's Gate I think my next game doesn't really need any introduction it's Final Fantasy 7 it came out in 1997 um I, but I didn't play it till a few years after because I mean our family wasn't really well off so we couldn't really afford much we just kind of stuff that just came our way we grabbed you know like if a friend came over and they had the game right we could play it and we'd say oh can we borrow it you know and they'd be like yeah cool you know or I'd go over to other people's houses but anyway Final Fantasy 7 was was amazing because it's a complete uh, free world in it after the first tutorial just like Baldur's Gate um, except it's even more open world. You had a whole world, and back then, having a whole world in just like that little disc, right, was just crazy to to me. And it proves just how strong the imagination is when you look back on that game. That you you know your 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 mind's eye is telling you, oh, this was the best thing. Like when I was a kid, Final Fantasy VII was the bee's knees. It was the best thing, right? It looked real to me, you know? Yeah, it looked real, so I was like, I was loving it, right? But then I, I tried to play it again, I think about three years ago, and I was like, oh god, they've got cubes for hands. What the hell is this? <laughs> and why did I think this was the best game ever? Which is why I'm super excited for the, the remake next year. I don't mind that it's episodic. Oh, is it this year? I think it's this year, actually, yeah. I don't mind that it's episodic. Um, I haven't really forayed into episodic stuff that much, but I don't mind doing it now. Um, with that, I mean, it's like a, you know, it's the ultimate, one of the ultimate games that I played. I just loved, I just loved, and I, I, you know, I can't thank Square Enix enough for that game. I put hours and hours into it, you know, trying to farm for the golden chocobo so you can get the Knights of the Round materia to, you know, kick. Sephiroth's ass. Uh, yeah, and then there was like finally, you know, after doing so much farming, there's finally defeating Sephiroth, and then there was like, then there was Sid, and Sid, and then Sid. I fucking love Sid, and Eris. Rest in peace. This game was the only game that, this, it's the only game since that's made me cry. When Ares died, it made me cry. I think I was 15 when I played the game. Um, when Sephiroth come down, comes down and stabs her, I was like, oh 
god, like I felt like my heart had been pulled out of my chest. It was it was horrible for me. But then afterwards, I was like, this is great storytelling. You know, when I think back on it now, but back then I was angry. I was like, oh my god, I get got to get Sephiroth, got to kick his ass, you know. And it, it really pushed you, what well, it pushed me towards farming and really kicking his ass. And then like, the first time I faced Sephiroth, I actually beat him um, because I farmed so much. I got my Golden Chocobo, got my Knights of the Round, got my, you know, I got my best weapon, you know, on everybody. And then just like wrecked him, right? Because And it was all because of Aerostein. It was like, she's my only healer, <laughs> and you kill my only healer. Plus, she was like, awesome, and she was like, the last of the ancients and everything. It was really sad. Uh, also, I'll probably play, um, I'll probably play Final Fantasy VII the remake on stream if they'll allow it. Uh, but I know what Square Enix, Square Enix is like. Um, uh, but yeah, that's Final Fantasy VII. I'm sure you all know it. Um, I, I think the one that's taken probably the most, apart from League of Legends, the one that's taken the most out of my time. Is actually Anarchy Online. Uh, now, not many of you know Anarchy Online because it was widely unknown. There wasn't any advertising for the game. They didn't really publicize it much. But it came out in 2001, and for the time, it looked pretty amazing. It was a complete world. Uh, everything was instanced, which was kind of annoying. Yeah, the technology wasn't there, so. Um, they had to, you know, do what they what they could do. But it, if you wanted to travel from the other side of the world that you're on, which was Rubicar from the other, it would take you like running uh, on a max level character. I'd say a couple hours. Yeah, I think. Yeah, maybe. But I mean, it it would take you a long. I mean, there was obviously you know fast travel stuff, right? But you really got the scale of how big the game was. I put about seven years into Anarchy Online, uh, all in total in-game, in-game time I put th over 300 days uh, into that game. Um, I was the organization leader for a organization called, uh, organization by the way is like a guild in World of Warcraft, um, uh, yeah I was, I was the leader of uh, an organization called Le the Leviathan Movement and I wasn't the original leader. The original leader was Chihi Roshan, and um, I can't remember what his character's name was, but his his real name was Taylor. They were both partners, great people, um, but they passed the reins to me when they just lost interest in the game, and I had the reins on the Leviathan movement for about two and a half years, and I, I had about 500 people under my name, just, you know, doing things but I, I wanted to change the direction of our organization things because I was endgame I pretty much I worked so hard in the character my character's name was PPBD I worked so hard in that character and I in the end uh, turned kind of turned our org into a PVE and PVP uh, organization um, so I would uh, just because I was, I love the PvE in the game. And I love the PvP. I love both of them, right? I love because the whole deal with the PvP in the game was that um, people, you got benefits from getting these big tower sites, right? And you had to fight for them. And if somebody came to attack them, then you had to defend them, and they would give you really quite big benefits uh, for PvE. And that's what I loved about it is because you know it used to make you better. I used to try and you know I used to try and do off the wall builds all the time. And then there was like a final build that I did that uh, really just wrecked people. I mean the the videos you see on YouTube are is with the build I had. Um, and uh, I mean sometimes you know this you know the the balance in the game was quite good. You know there were nemesis there were nemesises nemesi. I don't know what the plural for that is, but uh, there were nemesis for uh, the Enforcer, which was the character I played, the, the class I played, um, which was good, because there should have been. You know, for the Enforcer, it was like soldiers and keepers. For engineers, the count of engineers would have been Enforcers and soldiers, I think. And, you know, so on. You know, there was like a buttload of like different counters and stuff. I, I thought the balance was pretty good, but other people hated it. Um, you know, because they they all they wanted right was the game to have 
you know, for there to be one supreme class, and I don't think there, sh you know, there shouldn't be really. Um, but yeah, I always used to do off the wall builds in that game, try and get the most DPS with an actual tank class, which was <laughs> fun, um, and I used to be quite good at that. Uh, I used to be ta I used to be tanking and have like the top DPS, uh, which was super fun. Um, but yeah, after a while, the game kind of got a bit stale because they it, you could tell that Funcom, who owned the game, were getting a bit um, were getting a bit lax on ideas. Like you know, people were asking for new content, and they just add a boss that would give you old legendary gear. That's not in the game anymore, you know, and it was like, well, that's really lazy, you know, I think his name was the Collector or something, you know, it, it used to get items, it's, it's law was it collected items from other bosses, right, and there was like a certain chance that you might actually, there's a certain chance that you might actually get this stuff from this boss, right, but I didn't get that, right? I think the last expansion they did that was good was Alien Invasion, and that was actually the first one they did. It was when aliens were in, were invading Rubicar, the world that we're in. Yeah, and you've got to defend it. Right, and that was pretty cool. Uh, but then it got a bit weird when they had the Shadowlands. Now, the, the mission system and the lore system in the game isn't crazy clear. Like, you can't really... I mean, if you read really read into some of the, the things that people were saying, like, when you talk to them, maybe, but it's still not completely clear how the Shadowlands appeared and the only way you can get to 220 is by having the expansion Shadowlands. I didn't really like it uh, because I didn't get it at all. It was like, I think it was like a, it was like a rift in Rubicar and but yeah I'm not gonna try and explain it because I don't know. You know one of the things I enjoyed most about the game though because I've spoken about a lot of things I don't like. The thing I liked most about the game was the activity of like the mods and the admins and the developers and stuff, because what they tend they would just randomly appear in like a city, right? They'd they'd be like floating and they'd be like huge and you know be ep pretty epic, and uh, then suddenly like there'll be a law bit happen, then like s there'll be some crazy big invasion by some random you know army. I mean I think one time there was like a random invasion by giant uh, by a giant leet and loads of little leets and th these little leet things are like little hamster things that only have two legs right and they're cute right but there was like a whole invasion and that was super fun i like that uh, but there was also like role play stuff right because in the game there was three factions there was clan who in the story were were the original settlers on the planet rubicar and then there was uh omnicar uh was it omnicar Wow, Omni, sorry, I can't, that isn't their full name, but I was Omni, right, basically Omni were a company, like, kind of like Wayland yutani from Alien, took residence on the planet, and they made it, they said, basically, it's ours, right, and the clans were against the Omni, but then there was the neutral, who just, you know, they just wanted to get on with their lives, you know, they, but they could join either side, but they also had some disadvantages where they couldn't use specific Omni stuff, or they couldn't use uh, specific clan stuff. So it was pretty difficult to for them to actually progress. Uh, but I, I got why people did it, because some people got pretty heated. Uh, I never did, because I was quite popular in that game. Um, people liked uh, people liked being around me because I I was you know, I was always up for anything in that game. I was I, I wanted to do PvE, I wanted to kill bosses, you know, and I wanted to do PvP, so that's uh that's Anakin Online anyway. I played World of Warcraft uh, on and off for about three years. I started in uh, which which was the first one? Burning Crusade. Yeah, but, yeah, I think it was Burning Crusade. Uh, the one with oh um, uh, God, Illidan. Yeah. Um, start with Burning Crusade. Didn't start. Well, no, no, I did start in vanilla, but I didn't really do much. I start. I, I then played uh, Burning Crusade for a little bit, but I. Didn't have no friends. See, that's the problem with MMOs is that it gets real boring real fast, real fast when you don't have any friends to play with. And I had no one to play with back then. Uh, back then, I was a, I was a carer for my grandma, and uh, so I didn't really get out much. I tried to, uh, I tried to go out clubbing and stuff, but I'm not really a clubber. 
Uh, <laughs> I don't really a party. I, I'm more of the guy that likes to be in small groups of people so we can just chill, you know, and watch movies, you know, not bloody have parties and have blaring music in my ears because it gives me a freaking headache. Uh, but, and I can't hear people, you know? Like, in clubs, uh, and going off subject, but in clubs, like when you go to clubs and the music's super loud and you're like, I just want to talk to people because there's so many people around you. You just want to talk to people, right? And then you go, it's it's really good in here, right? And they're like, what? It's really good. What? And in, in the end, I go, yeah. You know, I think like that's the universal answer for anyone in a club. Yeah. You know, or nodding your head or laughing. You know, it's kind of the lull of, uh, of clubbing. But anyway, back to the game. <laughs> Uh, World of Warcraft. Um, yeah, I played BC, got to about level 60 on a warrior, and then stopped because I got bored, no one to play with. Then I played a little bit of Wrath of the Lich King, uh, again, got bored, max level, stopped playing. Then Cataclysm came along. At the time I had a few friends to play with, and the game was super fun because I had friends to play with. I start, It was a very... Sorry about that. It was the very first time that uh, I started right at the beginning of an expansion and I was super interested in this one because Deathwing uh, and the, like, the whole world just changing and then like Deathwing could just randomly turn up and I've seen him several times through playing the expansion. And the reason why I love playing it right from the beginning is that you could set things in motion. Like you were one of the flag characters to set things like prices, how bosses were killed, stuff like that. And it was super fun for me. Like I made so much gold right at the beginning of Cataclysm because I just, whatever. And because it was new, everyone's like, oh, just get, get, take all my money. You know, it was really fun. Um, then uh, it got to a point where, because I was playing on the North American servers, um, because that's where most of my friends were at the time. Um, it got to a point where I couldn't really sustain the raid times or whatever because the raid times were like two, three o'clock in the morning. Right now, for for I was in the UK, so I couldn't really sustain that. So I, in the end, said, "Listen, guys, I'm going to switch. I'm going to go over to the EU." I went over to the EU, and because I had no friends over here apart from a couple, um, I made some great friends over in NA. But because I didn't really have <clears throat> many players, many people who played World of Warcraft over here. Uh, I just stopped playing. Um, but that, du during the NA period of World of Warcraft, that was when I started playing League of Legends. Um, after raids, you know, there was this guy, I can't remember his name now, but he goes, Hey, does anyone want to play League of Legends? And I'm like, this was when it first came out, and I was like, what's League of Legends? It sounds dumb, doesn't it? League of Legends? Like, and I'm like, and I hear it a couple of times right from this guy, and I'm like, nah, you know. But then I start to realize that a lot, a lot of people are playing it, and I was like, okay, let's give it a go. Uh, so then I download it, play it on the NA servers, and my very, very, very first game was with Aurelia, mid. <laughs> and I was like, and because I had no idea how to play the game, I was like, wow. This champion's shit. <laughs> right, she, you know, to me, she had no way of, like, really sustaining herself at, you know, at, at the early game at that time. And then, and then, like, in lane, I was like, gosh, she's so bad, right? But then I, I got the recommended items, which at the time, obviously, was Trinity Force. Right, and, uh, like, a couple other things. And uh, still is, really. And started wrecking. What, like, I, I think I was 0-5 in lane, and then... Like after I got a Trinity Force and like a tank item, I just started wrecking stuff. And I was like, okay, okay, this feels good. Yeah, yeah, this feels good. Right, and I, all I was doing was like rolling my head along the keyboard. You know, it was, it was really easy. But I, because of the because of how badly I did at the beginning, I didn't play Aurelia that much after that. Then I started to play Cogmore, and I was like, this guy's pretty cool. Cogmore, he's got loads of got loads of range. All you have to do is press W, and it's like easy mode. Uh, back then, because Q didn't have a skill shot, um, and that you know it was it, he just did a load of damage. I think at the time he was one of the hybrid carries because at the time it was really, really at the time it was really common for people to 
to play like utility tanks in you know, like jungle and that, right? So because of the heart of gold stuff like that. So Kogan was just perfect for that because he takes away health, you know, just with his, you know, he takes away percentage health just with his W, you know, and he has loads of attack speed, and he becomes just a monster late game if you're protected. Like, but at the time I didn't really know that I was just like I was just W right clicking and things would die. Um, but yeah, but you know, obviously I couldn't play because it was on the NA server and I was getting like 200 ping and it was getting a bit hard. So then I switched to the EU West and I started. I, I made I made a couple friends who wanted to play League of Legends um, and then I started playing League of Legends and then this is where we talk about League of Legends I guess and not that I have, haven't been for the last 10 minutes but yeah on EUS the uh, started playing uh, Janna and Ash from 1 to 30 pretty much just those two solid Janna's one of, still one of the best supports in my eyes. You have to play her very well, but she's the best peeler uh, in my opinion. Um, and my favorite move to do on her was the old flash ult. You know, when they're near the turret, and because they, they never expected it, especially back then. I mean, they do now, but back then they didn't. Uh, I used to do like flash. I used to, I used to say to my AD carry, I used to say, "Hey, wait, right? Wait for them to get to the turret, right?" And she's like, "Okay." Like sometimes they be you know a bit sassy but so no wait we wait for them and then I just flash over them and ult them into the turret and then because they hit the wall they're also stunned for like well they didn't say they're stunned but they are uh, because they have to travel the distance you see so it seems like they're stunned so then like we're just wailing on them you know slowing them and shit and like the turret's doing our work for us and uh yeah and then always get like a at least a kill sometimes a double kill they, those are good days like old ash as well was fun it was it used to be so fun to it used to be so fun to um send an you know an ash arrow across the across the map and just hit somebody you know it's like an impossible shot like uh, yellow started in season one it was just oh, so cool um what was his name just yellow by then no, but well, it's Bora anyway, the guy that plays him. After a year of playing League of Legends, I yeah, so I I was in EU West, and uh, after about say four or five months, I got to level thirty uh, very slowly because I was not really playing it that much, uh, nowhere near as much as I play it now. I only really played it when friends were playing it, and. But then I didn't really get into uh, ranked until the end, uh, the start of season three. Then season two came. Uh, Fnatic won the first world championship, and I was like, "Wow, this looks like it's going to be a pretty big thing." Even though it looked pretty unprofessional and stuff, you know, there was still actual money in this. So I just started thinking, "Oh, maybe you know, if I can get better and better at the game, you know, maybe I can be one. Of the, you know, maybe I can be one of these people." who was on the stage. I mean, this never happened. <laughs> I, just, I So, me and a friend, we made a team called Raging Snail. Uh, we thought, <laughs> at the time, we thought, hey, we need, you know, because we were prom promoting no raging, just chilling, you know, in-game and having fun, right? So, I'm thinking, what is, like, the most oxymoron kind of name for a team you know, to do with raging, you know, what just doesn't make sense, right, uh, to do with raging, so, you know, I mean, can you ever, can you imagine a snail raging? I can't, right, it's, I mean, if someone wants to make a, a picture of that, a drawing of it, would <laughs> be amazing. Yeah, so, we came with the name Raging Snail, we got, we got entered into a tournament, uh, we came, um, due to a like in, just inexperience with really within the team at this point I had about 800 games under my under my belt in league um, so I wasn't tremendously experienced but I still I still knew you know what to do I was a jungler back then uh, as well unfortunately we had like a really good diamond daily carry but the support we had uh, he, he just didn't have much experience so we didn't do very well um, I think we won two games and in the last game we lost and we were like this close to getting to semi-final uh, very close but you know that ended and then 
after that happened, I just didn't really know what to do with Raging Snail because we had inexperienced players who didn't really play that much. A couple of them just started university, so they didn't really play League of Legends. I know that sounds weird because normally university students play League of Legends a lot, but I think they just lost interest in the game. So I tried to find other supports, but we just didn't gel with anybody until eventually about two years ago we decided to disband Raging Snail. Then like, I just spent a long time just trying to up my game in League of Legends. Uh, for three seasons I've been gold. You know, this season I want to get higher because in gold, uh, sorry, in the last three seasons uh, all I've done is basically wait till the end of the season, rush the gold, right, and then stopped because I just wanted the reward. You know, I just wanted the reward of having a gold banner plus having the skin. You know, the Victoria skins have been coming out since season three. But this year is different. I really want to push quite, I have knowledge of the game. My skill level isn't great, right? But I have a lot of knowledge of the game due to my like 5,000 games I've played now in this game. I know every champion, you know, I try and learn all the new champions that come out as fast as I can. Uh, I've played almost every single champion now. At the end of last year, I thought, right, I don't know where I am right now in my life. Uh, I've done, I've tried to, I've done courses, I've tried to push myself. I was doing an IT course for to be an IT technician. I spent so much time on that um, when I was uh, younger, uh, a little, well, a few years back. But unfortunately the company that I was with, uh, who were helping with with that, they went into administration, they stopped, uh, they stopped all, you know, teaching, they, you know, and then like another, it took about six months for another company to pick that up. And then that company failed, uh, failed me by not really giving me the resources I needed. So now I'm kind of, you know, this is personal kind of stuff, but I know you, you know, you guys probably want to hear a little bit about my personal life, but so now I'm in like 3000 pounds of debt with nothing to show for it really, other than the knowledge that's in my head. I don't have certificates or anything. I, I try and study what I can online uh, because there's a buttload of stuff online, but that, you know, that doesn't really matter when you've got no paper. You know, there's no paper on my table saying he can do this, he's qualified to do this, you know. But then I thought, right, I need to really, you know, I'm getting, I'm not old, but I'm getting, you know, getting on further in my life, so I need to think about what to do. And the thing you hear all the time when that kind of question is asked is, do what makes you happy. And so the thing that makes me happy is gaming. And another thing that makes me happy is making other people happy. And another thing that makes me happy is gaming and making people happy at the same time. <laughs> so because last year I got my new fiber optic in, which I pay for now, as soon as it came here, I immediately got fiber optic. I thought, I'm going to start a gaming channel. Then something amazing happened uh, early January when I was streaming. I'd only been streaming for a short time. I've been streaming some D&D before then and then I've been streaming some LOL on and off but I'd only be getting a couple of viewers but then something amazing happened early January when a YouTuber and streamer called Felipe360 raided my Twitch channel um, because he appreciated uh, my attitude in the game and I had at one point over 2,000 viewers at one point and I was like I was completely blown away I couldn't believe it uh, completely shocked you know I want to have fun I want everybody else to have fun but I want to push I want to push like to have a gaming channel I want to do this stuff that I enjoy so much because of Felipe and because of Alex Capo and um, I forget Duvoy is it because of the amazing thing they did you know so then 
I got in touch with uh, friends of mine who are fantastic artists and like I made a steam group and I've created now created a Facebook group and all of this just happened because of Felipe right and it was amazing and uh, I'm really proud of what I've done so far Re like I'm actually proud of it I you know I'm not getting much support around me other than my followers which is you know you guys are amazing you know, someone asked me the question last night on stream. They said, what is it you want to do in your life? Which is what I asked. What do you want to do in your life? Which is uh, something I asked before my before all this happened. And just like at the top of my mind, it's always been there is, I want to do something worthwhile for the human race. And this sounds so cliche, like so movie-like. But it really is the truth. Like, I want to do something that I'll be remembered for. I think gaming and promoting a positive attitude during gaming is something that is worthy of being remembered for. And I, I want it to stick. Because gaming rescues people. It's rescued me... If I didn't have gaming, I don't know where I'd be now uh, without going too far into it. Uh, without all you guys, I don't know where I'd be now. Um, so now this year, I'm going to push myself to be to get platinum in League of Legends because this makes me happy. You know, makes me happy. It makes you guys happy. I'm going to play other games that make me happy. Um, because this world is too too full of hate and it shouldn't be we're all on the same planet and we should be treating it as so yeah, anyway, that was super deep <laughs> uh, this is a pretty long this is a pretty long vlog, I wasn't expecting it to be this long uh, I'll go into other games um, because there's like, all I've spoken about in this one is three games, I think three or four games so, yeah, I want to I want to thank you guys for sticking with me and giving me so much support and I want to give a special thanks to Felipe Alexo Capo uh, for supporting me on that day I know it was meant to be kind of a troll at first but it really has changed my life for the better uh, and no matter what anyone says I'm going to keep pushing um, I have great people around me right now um, you guys and you know people here you know, I start to show through the through the woodwork to support me. Burning oil gaming is something that I want people to look at and think, "Hey, that's that chill dude. That's that cool dude." You know, the one that wears the owl costume. <laughs> well, we know it's not really an owl costume. Right? It's really my skin, but yeah. Thank you guys for coming. This is my first vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll go over more games and I'll speak more about myself if you enjoyed this vlog. Uh, yeah, and I'll see you next time. Bye.